welcome to the South River Mayor Borough Council meeting number 13 held today on August 2nd, 2021, 87 p.m. I'm calling this meeting to order. Now reading the statement of notice of publication. The clerk. In compliance with chapter 231 of Public Law 1975, notice of this meeting should be held at the middle school slash elementary school cafeteria on Three Montgomery Street, South River, has been published in the Home News Tribune on July 30th, posted on the Municipal Building Bulletin Board, the Borough website, the front door of the Criminal Justice Building at 61 Main Street, South River, and on the said cafeteria door. Thank you. Roll call. Mayor Prentel. Here. Councilwoman Ballard. Here. Council President Sula. Here. Councilman Here. Councilman Richardson. Here. Councilman Rivera. Here. And Councilman Oliveira. Here. Thank you. Let us stand for the salute of the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. Please be seated. The next portion of our agenda is for proclamations, honors, awards, and presentations, and we do have a proclamation. Whereas Drew Pearson was born and raised in South River, and was a 1969 graduate of South River High School, where he was first a wide receiver, then quarterback for the South River football team, which was the Central Jersey Group three champions in 1968, finishing third in the state, and where he received an individual All-State Award and was selected as Back of the Year by the New Brunswick Touchdown Club. And whereas Drew Pearson went to University of Tulsa, on a football scholarship where he started as quarterback and then became a wide receiver and where he received a university president's award as the team's best spirited and most unselfish member in 1973 and in 1985 was inducted into the Tulsa Hall of Fame and whereas Drew Pearson was signed by the Dallas Cowboys and became one of the NFL's greatest wide receivers being named to the NFL 1970s all-decade team and one of the top 20 pro football all-time wide receivers. And whereas Drew Pearson, known as a clutch catcher in game-winning situations, including the game-sealing touchdown in the 1973 playoff game against the Los Angeles Rams, the game-winning touchdown in the 1974 Thanksgiving game against the Washington Redskins, and most well-known the Hail Mary reception from Roger Stallback that resulted in the Cowboy victory in the 1975 playoff game. And whereas Drew Pearson, with all of his great football accomplishments, has continued to be a great role model for the youth of both his hometown and the rest of the country by his example of good sportsmanship and fair play, and by continuing to give back to his hometown and to the many worthy causes, and whereas Drew Pearson has exemplified throughout his life the values of the Football Hall of Fame of commitment, integrity, courage, and respect, and whereas we as residents and officials of the Borough of South River have received and continue to receive the benefit of Drew Pearson's personal example and continued dignified and proud representation of our entire borough, now therefore be it resolved that the Mayor and Council of the Borough of South River, on behalf of all of the residents of South River, celebrate Drew Pearson for his accomplishments and inspiring example of commitment to excellence and for his induction into the National Football Hall of Fame. I hereby declare August 8, 2021, Drew Pearson Day in the Borough of South River, given under my hand and seal of the Borough of South River, New Jersey, this day in August. Congratulations, Mr. Pearson. It has been a long time coming, and to celebrate it on the 8th, he will be inducted into the Football Hall of Fame, and Roger Stallback will be the presenter. So we wish him the very best in a little way his hometown here celebrates with him. Congratulations, Drew Pearson. Let's see, on our agenda, the agenda session concerning the South River Restaurant and Bar Stimulus. We did not discuss this at our last meetings. Uh, who's going to take this to uh, discuss? Uh, this was put on because I believe our clerk 
had brought this out that we have a situation where uh, it is possible to give some relief to our restaurants and bars uh, because we have enough money in our fund. And the question is, would we be willing to do that? In other words, instead of charging them the usual amount for our liquor license, we can either charge them nothing or something less, depending on the financial situation. That's what we're here to discuss. Does anyone have any thoughts on it? Or should we just uh, tell the uh, Mr. Zanga and Mr. Lebdensky to work on that so that we can pass the resolution at our August 23rd meeting concerning uh, however much re relief we can give them. Mr. Mayor, I, yes. have, I have brought this up. Um, I did see that our previous clerk had mentioned to the borough last year as well as the beginning of this year regarding this as a way to um, help our local businesses that might be struggling or have struggled because of the pandemic. Uh, my question is, I know it has here um, that South River has always, well, has since 1982 charged an extra $200 on retail liquor license holders. Um, do we know what the total is that we have in that account right now? Hundred and twenty four thousand. Um, do we know the total of licenses that we have in South River right now? It's about thirty two licenses now four five Okay. So I I just merely brought this up because it was something that our clerk had mentioned that nobody went forward with. I was hoping we had done this before we raided everybody's license, but being that that was impossible, I still wanted to bring it up, see what we could do, um, and know if we should still continue to take this extra two hundred dollars every year. If we're not, we've never have we ever used it to buy a license back. Are you sure? I mean, okay. Okay, so I, my, again, this was to bring it up. We've never done it. We're holding money. We're taking money from the businesses to one day do something, but 1982 is almost 40 years now. So that was why I brought it up. And I'm sure that's why uh, Mr. Bray brought it up as well. And, um, then would you please give us a financial report on this, Mr. Zanga, with possible recommendations? Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Mayor, for bringing it up. <laughs> Moving on to our ordinances. Uh, some of these ordinances will be voted on tonight. Some of them will be carried to next Monday. There will be a special meeting next Monday at uh, 61 uh, Main Street. Uh, I shouldn't say that. There will be a special meeting next Monday. I'll talk more about that at the end of the meeting. Ordinance 2021-06. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to waive the full reading. Motion has been made to waive the full reading. Second. Seconded by Mr. Gurchensky. All in favor? Aye. Against the ayes have it. We open this up to the public. If there's anyone who wishes to come forward and speak about this, please give your name and address. Um, first call, second call, third call. Motion opposed. <clears throat> Motion by Mr. Gindy, Ms. Ballas. Okay, Mr. Gindy made the motion, seconded by Mrs. Ballas. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes. The ayes have it. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we carry the public hearing over to the August 9th meeting. I'll second that. Madam Attorney, is that proper? Yes. Okay, then. Motion has been made to carry this uh, to the, carry the public hearing and then subsequent vote will occur on August the 9th. It has been made by Mr. Siula, seconded by Mr. Gindi. Discussion? Roll call? Mr. Mayor, yes. if I may. 
I would think maybe we would like to explain what happened because uh, as you can see, there might be people in the audience that came today for this uh, ordinance thinking that we'd be voting on it today and we are not. The, uh, there was a problem with the advertisement in terms of it. The Although people who are interested know where it was going to be heard and where this meeting was going to be heard, technically it has to be part of the advertisement as to when the ordinance is going to be heard. So this ordinance, number seven, number eight, and number nine, all have that defect. So therefore, we are going to open it up to the public. You can come forth and speak. We will close this portion and then have the hearing again. We're going to carry the hearing because it's a technical requirement. We'll carry the hearing until the August 9th meeting where we'll reopen it to the public and then vote on it. Mr. Mayor, if I yes. may, um, I know at last meeting when we had this discussion, we, I was kind of waiting to see when you were going to make your decision of having this meeting here at the school and you chose not to do that at the last meeting. I think that falls a little bit on you as to clarifying a little better how to publicize this meeting or where it's going to be. You kind of left it out like an open-ended question at the end of the meeting, like you didn't know where this meeting was going to be. I did not know whether it was going to be a Zoom meeting, whether we were going to have to wear masks. I didn't know a lot of things. And I don't know about next week's meeting. <coughs> at the rate things are going, it may be a Zoom meeting. Don't know that. As it is, we will make that decision on Wednesday, depending on what the governor decides. They've made new rulings now, today, I understand, about uh, having meetings. It may become mandatory that if you're going to have an indoor meeting, you may have to all wear masks. I don't know. I requested that we have it, uh, that you bring a mask with you, just in case that it became mandatory sometime today. That's why I, that's why I delayed it. Um, and that's why I can't say absolutely for certain that we're going to, have to be meeting at 61 Main Street next uh, August 9th. We will make the official announcement as we go along during the week, depending on what is happening. And again, it might have to be a Zoom meeting. I don't know. Events are occurring quickly. Decisions are coming from on high. Let's try and do the best we can. Roll call. Yes. Council yes. Council Yes. Council Council No. Council Yes. Council 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 Mayor, I'd like to make a way, uh, motion to waive the full reading. Second. Motion has been made by Councilman Sula to waive the full reading. Seconded by Councilman Gindy. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? The ayes have it. Opening this up to the public. This concerns the licenses for cannabis facilities. Please give your name and address. Come forward, ask questions, make comments. On first call, second call, third call. Motion to close. Motion, well, no, motion to adjourn for this. Mr. Seula. Uh, yeah, I'd like to make a motion to carry this for the public hearing over to the August 9th meeting. Second. Okay, motion has been made by Mr. Seula, seconded by Mr. Gindy. Discussion? Roll call. Yes. 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 Okay. We will revisit this next Monday.
Moving on to Ordinance 2021 08. Clerk. An ordinance of the Borough of South River County, Middle Sex State of New Jersey, and Chapter 120 of the Borough Code of the Borough of South River entitled Cannabis. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to wear the full reading. Okay. Motion has been made by Councilman Siula, seconded by Councilman Ballas. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All against? The ayes have it. Opening this to the public, uh, you may come forward. Please give your name and address. Um, first call, second call, third call. Mr. So Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we carry this over to the, for public hearing, over to the August 9th meeting. Second. Motion has been made by Councilman Fiola to carry this until the August 9th meeting, seconded by Councilman Gindy. Discussion? Roll call. Councilman Ballas? Yes. Councilman Yes. 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 Okay, we will revisit this on August the 9th. Moving on to 2021-09, Madam Clerk. The ordinance authorizes and varies federal housing and community development grant fitness and equipment. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to waive the full reading. Second. Motion has been made to waive the full reading by Councilman Sula, seconded by Councilman Gindy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? The ayes have it. Uh, opening this to the public. When come forward, please give your name and address. You can ask any questions or make any comments. On first call, second call, third call, motion. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we carry this for a public hearing over to the August 9th meeting. Second. Motion has been made by Councilman Siola to carry this public hearing until the August 9th meeting and seconded by Councilman Gindy. Discussion? Roll call. Yes. 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 Okay. We will revisit this on August the 9th. The next three we will be voting on tonight. Ordinance 2021-10. All ordinance providing for various capital improvements and the acquisition of various capital Make a motion to waive the full reading. Motion has been made to waive the full reading by Councilman Sula. Second. Seconded by Councilman Gindy. All in favor? Aye. Against? The ayes have it. Opening this up to the public. Please give your name and address if you'd like to make any comments or any questions. First call, second call, third call, motion. Motion to close the public portion by Mr. Gindy, seconded by Mr. Sila. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against the ayes have it. Your pleasure on the bond ordinance. Make a motion we move the bond ordinance. Motion has been made by Councilman Sila. I'll second up. Seconded by Mr. Gindy. Discussion? Roll call. Council Member Yes. Council Yes. 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 The bond ordinance has been passed. Mr. Zenga, at the uh, time of your comment, you can uh, explain it in a little bit more detail as to what that's all about. Count uh, Ordinance 2021 11. Madam Clerk. And Ordinance of the Rural South River and Middlesex State University, Portland, and Chapter 72, Article 2. Make a motion to waive the full reading. Motion has been made to waive the full reading by Council Sula, seconded by Mr. Gindy. All in favor? Aye. Against the ayes have it. Opening this up to the public, please give your name and address. You can come forward, ask any questions, make any comments. On first call, second call. Third call. Motion. Motion Second. has been made to close the public portion by Mr. Gindy, seconded by Mrs. Ballas. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All against? The ayes have it. Your pleasure on the ordinance? Move the ordinance. The ordinance has been moved by Councilwoman Ballas. Second. Seconded by Councilman Gerchensky. Discussion? 
Roll call. Councilman Gonzalez? Yes. Council President Abstain. Councilman Gindi? Abstain. Councilman Yes. Councilman New York? Yes. And Councilman Yes. The ordinance has been passed. Ordinance 2021 12. Madam Clerk. An ordinance amending the ordinance fixing the salary ranges of certain employees of the Board of Officers and Employees in the Borough of South Carolina. Make a motion to waive the full reading. Motion has been made to waive the full reading by Mr. Sula. Second. Seconded by Mr. Gendy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against the ayes have. Opening this up to the public. You may come forward. Please give your name and address. And you can ask any questions or make any comments. First call, second call, third call. Motion has been made by Mrs. Ballas second. to close the public portion. Seconded by Mr. Siula. All in favor? Aye. Against the ayes have it. Your pleasure on the ordinance. Make a motion to move the ordinance. The ordinance has been moved by Mr. Siula. Second. Seconded by Mr. Gindy. Discussion. Roll call. Councilman Ballas. Yes. 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 Moving on to ordinances first reading by title only. Ordinance 2021 13. Make a motion with the full reading. Well, well yeah, no, so I'm sorry. It's, it's only on I'd like to move that the council pass ordinance 2021 13 on its first reading by title only, and the clerk be authorized to publish the same as required by law for a second reading and public hearing to be held at 7 p.m. on August the 23rd. 23rd, I'm sorry. Here we go. Um, in the council chambers at the Criminal Justice Building at 61 Main Street, South River, New Jersey. Second that. Just a minute, if I may suggest, adding the words at 7 p.m. At 7 p.m. At 61 Main Street, South River, New Jersey, <coughs> and or virtually via virtual. Zoom. Vir virtual is going to be in Zoom. You accept those amendments? I accept them. You accept those amendments, Mr. Gindy? Yes. Motion has been made by Mr. Seula, seconded by Mr. Gindy. Roll call. Yes. 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 We shall revisit this on August 23rd. That's either 61 Main Street and or virtually via Zoom. Yes. Just a quick question. Uh, could you. I know it says to repeal subsection E entitled pet parking. Can you state what pet is standing for? This ordinance, which was adopted several years ago, allows a developer to come into town and instead of having enough parking, can purchase parking spots for a set amount of money. And this is moving to repeal that. In light of certain developments that are coming in. Okay, now wouldn't this have to go? I know we're doing first hearing. Doesn't it have to go to the planning board as well before it comes back to us? Yes, it does. It's so, in. It's in the. It's in the ordinance. Does the planning board meet in between now yeah. and that? Yeah, we tomorrow. The planning meeting is, meeting is before our next meeting. Is it before the 23rd? If yes, it's not, yes, it is. Be, yes, it is. Yes, if it is. it's before the 23rd, then we're okay. It's before the 23rd. If it's not before the 23rd, we'd have to move the back meeting. It's in the notification. I just want to verify before 17. we advertise. Can meet on the 17th. Can meet on the 17th. Okay. Anything else? Okay. We then move to our reports. We'll move to our uh, professionals first. Uh, Mr. Koch. Thank you. Good evening, all. 
applications that we submitted to the DOT. Uh, we'll probably hear about the awards in October or November. For the electrical substation maintenance, the routine maintenance has been completed. The remaining work is to change the cables and the sweeps. The, the, the uh, sweeps were in decay. The cables are old. The contract is going to wait until the fall when the heat Temperatures subside, so they have to shut down the circuit. It doesn't put more load on other circuits in the station. Uh, well number two, the well is in. They poured the foundation. They're beginning to work on site piping. It's moving along nicely. I just remind everybody that even when it's done, it's permitting required well tests and permitting, which will take up more time. So it's not necessarily ready. So we're coming out of the summer soon for the, and the peak usage, so we'll definitely be in place for next year for, uh, for, and much sooner, but I do believe that uh, it's moving along nicely. And Councilwoman Nara and I have been keeping in touch on, on the uh, Safe Street School. Uh, that has a deadline of October 14th. We have plenty of time to keep it. And that is my report. Any questions for the borough engineer? Bruce, oh, sorry. Please. Bruce um, thank you for responding to my email. So we know that legislation was signed in regard to the lead pipes. Yes. I was able to look into, you know, from my understanding age, South River doesn't have a lot of lead pipes. They have lead joints. Can we see if we're required to change out the, uh, if it's a requirement for the joints to be swapped out under that legislation? I can check, but I don't think so. There's usually two pounded in. And then the lead goes around some hold it in. I think that's the method on the cast iron pipe. Okay. So, but I will gladly look into that for you and get back to you on that. Okay, thank you. Bruce, I have first I want to say thank you for uh, sending me the information you had on the Wilcox training. Uh, I knew that that was in 2018. I just like one, why did we not put it on the 2019 uh, DOT? Is that something that we threw off because now it's on the 20, 2020? Is there like a specific reason? I don't recall how the poll was made to not have it on there. Um, how? Why the Wilcox one wasn't? Done sooner. Uh -huh. I can remember the history on that. Um, I only looked up this. I could try to find more documentation to let you know well, how that happened. I'm glad it's on your 2020 repairs. I do know that you also had made a proposal for the Prentice one the first time yes. they brought it up. Would you um, maybe refresh our minds the next meeting just to know what that proposal is? Sure. You could sure. always keep that in mind. Yep. Um, I ask this because it is very important. I know you guys, I bring it up at every meeting, but once it gets cold and all that water starts freezing it between Prentice and Olchesky, that's when we're going to keep having problems. And if we've got these bundles of money that we've been saving lately, I think we can spare some money and maybe put this into a job, especially. Since uh, you know none of our projects started yet, so again, I'm reaching out to try to get that on there. Finally, I remember yeah. that being a fairly expensive project. I think on the order of 190 or 200 thousand. I'm going by memory, so I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. But my point, uh, or reason for bringing that up, is the DOT this year limited all communities, or 99 percent of them, to three road projects. I understand you said that last meeting, but I'm saying if we as a borough can add it to a project that we can that we are starting, maybe worth a bit. That's what I mean. 
and if I'm, we can my add. My only point was we're going to be looking for more expensive rooms to do in order to keep the grant award high. Mm -hmm. Because if we come up with three small ones, we won't be getting the numbers that we can get. So they're not taking money away from the town. We just have to work hard to find the project. Okay. All right. And then my last question, I know we're working on law number two. I don't know if this is a question for you or for Adriano, but um, two weeks ago, I was down at Veterans Field, and there's a lot of water being pumped out to that the wooded area between the borough yard and Veterans Field. Is that from the well? Is that what we're, what we're doing with the water? Like, what's that situation? Well, if it was the lake, was it in the Willow Lake Ditch? I'm thinking the Willow Lake Ditch runs right through there. Was it the Willow Lake Ditch? I'm wondering if the contractor was read it was part of the well where, where they were developing the well <coughs> and running the well and perhaps discharging it to the Willow Lake Ditch, which runs, comes down to the dog line and runs down the side. Okay, I was just, somebody had asked me, a resident had asked me if it was coming from the borough yard. I just didn't know what, if it was the well or if it was supposed to be doing that. I would, I would think so, and that's pure groundwater. That's not treated water. That's water out of the aquifer to develop the well. So you're flushing, you're bringing water up, pushing water back down to clear out the aggregate around the screen down at the bottom. So that is what they're doing. I don't know, but I think there's I think there's more than likely that. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, Bruce. Bruce, I believe we did do some uh, remediation on Wilcox Street too, a while back, as far as sewage and drainage goes. Mm -hmm. I believe we moved the storm sewer around the corner to accommodate some drainage in the winter time. Uh, we did it from another street, maybe seven or eight years ago. Okay. It came down and ran through there. But it still comes up. It's there's two sump. Oh, there was one right. sump. Now there's a second one further up the road. Oh, I'm trying to make sure I got my screen correct. So. Okay, I'm talking about one pop. Yep. So, yeah. so we added even a couple more inlets in the actual design. We moved one up to the higher sump pump that's now discharging to the okay. And then we put another one before the handicap ramp to try and catch water that was coming up the handicap ramp and going down and going across the verge down to the bottom. Yes. Yeah. So we kind of tweaked the design a little bit to try to address some conditions that okay. we found when we were walking in again. Great. Thank you, Greg. You're welcome. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, Bruce. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night, all. Hi, Bruce. Hi, Bruce. Mr. Zanga, if you could get by a microphone or so and just give it a quick report. So there's a grace period. Questions for Mr. Zango? Huh? Okay, very good. <laughs> Mr. Soros, how are you, sir? Anything to report? Sure. Having personally been affected, I thank you. <laughs> yes, they did an excellent job. Any questions? No? Okay, very good then. Okay. 
Chief, anything to report? Mayor, I, I don't have anything to report, but I'd like to uh, apologize to everyone that was here. Uh, usually, when I'm at the afternoon hour, I have to set up a first Tuesday in August. Uh, due to COVID, uh, we didn't have enough time to prepare for National Night Out. Usually, we fundraise for the event. Sometimes the event costs anywhere between four grand and one point five and close over ten grand. So, we didn't have enough time since last year to fundraise and to get the, uh, uh, the event all set up. But uh, hopefully, next year, of course, the fingers are going to come down bigger and better than National Night Out. Well, all things considered, if what's going on and what they're talking about uh, wearing masks, perhaps it was a good idea not to have it. Yeah. So, you know, no need to apologize. Thank I you, sir. One question. Yeah. Did we get notified that the census was coming around again? Again? Oh, yeah. wait. I got a story. Uh, they have been to my house four times. Once I was leaving, so I didn't speak with them. Last Thursday at 20 minutes to nine, at 20 minutes to nine, so it was 8.40. I didn't answer the door twice today. Now, they're not asking me questions because I've done my stuff. They were asking me questions about my neighbors. And do I know who lives in that house and how many people live in that house? And it just seemed odd that four people came to my house, four different people, so they're not even communicating with each other. Again, uh, I'm not aware of the census. I know there was, there was people out there today who could sell windows. We sent them over to the Washington DC census. I've never been aware of it. Well, then I just want to tell everybody they might not be coming to ask you something, but they were asking me to give information about my neighbor, and I refused to do it. The next time is just call the other neighbor. Yeah. I just, I just thought today twice was just strange. Mm -hmm. yeah. And no one knew about the other three. So just a warning to okay. other people. Okay? If you see something suspicious like that. Yeah, well, I figured I'd bring yeah, that up yeah. because they came twice today. Oh, and not wanted right. my information, not my neighbor's information, okay. which I refuse okay. to give up. Okay. Okay. Uh, have you finished your interviews or hiring of the new officer you guys really want? Uh, yeah, we didn't start interviews at my time. We just finished the background. We're all going to wrap along the third time. So probably sometime either. And this week, we're doing a ministry. So hopefully, by the next time, we're going to have to do We're hiring more than one? Hopefully. Okay. We're not just going to hire anyone. Okay. Best we can get. And you did yeah. hire a crossing guard in my court? In the we uh, just finished the background. Uh, this whole entire time, we got two applications. Uh, uh, one of them didn't pan out. Uh, the other one, we just got to complete the background investigation. The next house will be my wife. Thank you. Very cool. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Uh, I just have an update from the July 19th meeting regarding the working file application. All the contractors were approved on July 23rd, and the new application came in uh, from Studio Marina. To sell you, which is micro implementation that is pending. Thank you. Any questions for the clerk? We welcome back our regular borough attorney. Welcome back, Thank Andrea. You. Anything to report? Nothing tonight, ma'am. Okay, very good. Arthur? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just two things. Um, just some clarification on resolution 2021-215. It's a resolution that I asked to be put on the agenda in meeting with the business administrators from East Brunswick and Cerebral. Um, we had discussions. It appears that Old Bridge is wanting to develop uh, a large uh, area of Jake Brown Road off of Route 9 and Route 5, uh, 516. And their plan is to have all the traffic go on to Bordentown Avenue, not to go on to Route 9 and Route 516. So the three of us uh, got together and all three towns are putting up resolutions opposing this because uh, Bordentown Avenue right now is, uh, is crowded and this would affect um, the Overs Turnpike and Bordentown Avenue traffic light and the um, River Road and Old Bridge, uh and Bordentown Avenue traffic light. 
Uh, we are recommending that they get it out to 516 and Route 9 and not overload Bordentown Avenue, which has already uh, uh, reached its capacity. So uh, we ask that for your uh, um, vote. And the other thing is uh, ordinance number 219. Uh, this is appointment of administrative assistant for the utility department. We had six, I one person backed out before the interviews. And of the five uh, candidates, uh, Mr. Zanga, Mr. Dudas, and myself, interviewed all five and the candidate that we're putting up was the best qualified for the position. That's all I have. Anything for our thorough administrator? I do. Mr. Yes. For any of the people you interviewed have um, speak more than one language? Um, yes, a couple of them did. The candidate that um, we've chose has some basic Portuguese. Spanish Portuguese. But we looked at all the qualifications. That was one of the points. Um, her customer service background and um, just her qualities. Uh, we all agreed that she was the number one candidate and we offered her the job and she accepted the position. I only bring this up because once again, we have one employee at Washington, who speaks more than one language in one department, who is currently, isn't she currently in the utilities department? Our, our employee who speaks more than one language, what department is she currently in? I can't hear you, I'm sorry. Our borough employee at 48 Washington that currently speaks more than one language. Yes. What department is she currently in? Utilities. In the utilities. I just push that going forward again, the people we hire, if they can please speak or help assist our customers. I think uh, South River, we know how diverse it is. We know that a lot of people need some assistance and going forward, please try to reach out to be able to serve our customers, you know. Well, Councilman, that. as you know, besides being able to speak other languages. This is an important job that deals with handling of money. And we evaluated the um, individuals for that position with that in mind too. I believe uh, just now in tax season, uh, the CFO could probably tell us, what are they bringing in a day in cash? We're currently accepting cash again? Yes. Cash is legal tender in the United States of America. We cannot not accept cash. Well, we okay, but we weren't at one point, well, correct? Well, we weren't accepting cash when you were putting it in the drop box because the drop box would get filled and somebody could put their hand in very easily and take stuff out. Now that we're open, we take cash at the window. Okay. We're not I happy thought, about it, but we're, we'll take I it. I thought it was my understanding that once we opened that we still weren't accepting cash. That was news to me, I believe. I, I, had I, I would believe if we didn't take cash that we could be open to someone filing a complaint against the borough. The last I know, cash is legal tender in the United States. What we wanted to do and what we have to do are two different things. Already, I have we, a let me just, we, we are working on our utility billing with the new billing company where you will be able to take direct deposit out of your accounts. So that will alleviate, but there are the number of people who don't have bank accounts in town. And without a bank account, they can't issue a check, you know, going to get a money order, they have to pay for the money order. So they are technically, uh, legally allowed to pay with cash. Do we know if Opsolve is, is doing the um, paperless for billing? Okay. Okay. 
Okay. I had one more question, but Jason, you can go. Okay. So I, I want to kind of piggyback off that and learn about the process for hiring. So I know with my job right now, you know, we have to have a set set of questions for each interview because from my understanding, those items you can over up and you, you can be requested. Is the town having a set set of questions for each interview or is it you're asking different questions for each? No, sure it's equitable. Yeah, for depending, each depending on the position, there are different questions that we have to ask. Okay. This one dealing with cash and dealing with the public have its own set of questions. You know, other ones when you're talking about hiring a DPW, there's other sets of questions. No, absolutely. I just want to make sure each candidate is being asked the same question. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. And then my second question is, you know, as a new councilman, I was able to go through uh, the agendas from the beginning of the year. And one of the things that I noticed was with AGRA. Uh, and I wanted to bring this up because I've noticed since January, we've spent close to $110,000 with AGRA thus far. And out of that money, $60,000 is toward licensed operators. All right. A T2 licensed operator makes eight, about $85,000 a year full time. We're slated to pay this, uh, this company $120,000 roughly. You know, so we're right now paying roughly $35,000 over the market for a licensed water operator. I understand it's a necessity right now because of everything that's happened, but is this sustainable? Are we able to continue this long-term? You know, I've heard that we don't have funds, but it looks like $35,000 we can easily recoup by hiring someone in-house. Yeah. What, once, we, once we settle our violations with the DEP that came from um, previous years, We'll be able to go back to lesser hours with a, an operator and we would hire an operator that no one in the borough qualified right now to be an operator. Right now, would, DEP is requiring us 28 hours a week. We can drop that back to 20 and that's that would be a, a cost savings. But right now, it's it, Agra is doing a lot more than just uh, that person is doing a lot more just being the operator. No, absolutely. And right. I, I noticed that starting, I believe, in April, their fee went up a couple hundred dollars in their monthly operator costs. I just want to make sure within we're promoting growth within the town. And if there's an individual or individuals within the borough that want to become operators, that they're given that opportunity. They, they are, I believe, one of the water department personnel now going to school. That's all I have already. Thank you. Mr. Longdonsky, I have one more question. I know now it's vacation time and a lot of people have been out and taking their vacations. Are we having our uh, staff fill in when needed to different departments within 48 Washington? Yes, we make arrangements when we know that people are on vacation. Uh, certain people in the utility department move from their regular job up to the counter. In the building department, the receptionist takes all the call, and I handle all the um, administrative parts of the building department. I just want to make note once more that I know, Mr. Londensky, you are a business administrator, but you do hold a lot of hats. Um, Delegating is one. I know the last few people we hired, we made sure that they were able and um, would learn more than just their task, their job task, to be able to fill in when people are away. Um, you are one person handling various departments by yourself, and I don't think that's right, especially since we're not paying you to do so. Uh, so I just want to say once again, if we need to look into how to delegate within our uh, departments at 48 Washington or teach other members, employees within our 48 Washington how to do other tasks, I think we should be doing that. God forbid you get sick, Mr. Wondensky, and can't come in. Those are several departments that you're in charge of yourself. I just went to the doctor today. I'm the healthy of the horse. <laughs> well, I said God forbid. Anyone else? I have one more question. Uh, sure. Uh, piggybacking off of uh, 
Councilman Alvaro, you said DAP violations. How long is this for? The DAP violations? Well, we've narrowed most of them down. There are some, the ones that we leave for the end, there are some that are very costly and we're leaving them for the end because we're still negotiating back and forth with them whether or not we're grandfathered or not. Um, they have provided us some stuff and we are getting quotes on some. I mean, the plant was approved 40 years ago by them and then they've come up with some changes that they're requiring us to do. And at some point we are saying that we're grandfathered and they're supplying us with documentation saying that they want certain things and uh, we're getting down to the, the bottom of the list. Um, we have not had any uh, issues with them in months. And they understand our work schedule. Um, and there's just a couple of large items that were negotiated with them yet. If there's nothing else, why don't you continue, Mr. Gendy? We'll start with you as we give our uh, various reports. All right. Well. The next planning board meeting is uh, August 17th. Uh, last few meetings has been uh, pretty interesting. A lot of uh, interesting applications coming to the town. Please come out and uh, see what's coming. Uh, next zoning board meeting is going to be August 24th. Uh, Parks and Rec. Well, we have been working uh, very hard on this. Uh, I know that the uh, fireworks uh, was up in the air, but uh, we have come to a date, which is going to be August 26th, which is a Thursday night. I believe after speaking to the superintendent, it looks like that the field will be ready by then. Uh, so uh, I'll be talking more about that in uh, my regular comments. Okay. So, yeah. Mrs. Ballas, do you have any uh, comments um, concerning your ladies on this? Nothing at this time, but I, I did reach out to the cultural and heritage group. But I don't even know who's really left on there to try to get in touch and have an in-person meeting with them. Okay. So. Very good. Mr. Shula. Uh, the only thing is the you know, environmental, they've been uh, doing a lot of tree applications and they're working on that. Uh, EBC, uh, they're meeting, they're preparing a welcome package for new residents and new businesses to help streamline the process. So they're all, that's all still in the works. So that's all I have right now. Okay. okay. I know you're New, we just got here, Mr. Oliveira, but anything to uh, report as to your liaison? Yeah, I had a board of uh, library board of trustees meeting. Evelina and our team have applied for two grants, the ALA NASA partnership. This grant is being partnered with the uh, South River Recreation Department, and it's looking to serve underserved youth in the science field. Uh, they've also applied for the ARPA grant through the New Jersey State Library Association. And with this, I, I thought this was an awesome idea on their end. They were looking to purchase Chromebooks and hotspots to lend out to patrons. So as we're in the pandemic, you never know what's going to happen. If you need internet hotspots, please visit the library. They currently have two. Um, and they're looking to purchase seven more Chromebooks and seven more uh, library hotspots. That's all I have, Mayor. Okay, thank you, Mr. Gruchensky. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as you've heard from our uh, borough engineer, the well is coming along in our... Uh, Utilities department had done an excellent job over the particular mishap that we had on Main Street uh, during the paving issue and everything where a truck had taken a wrong turn and unfortunately take that out a few wires and our utility company had come up in uh, flying colors uh, <laughs> within a uh, minimal amount of time, uh, especially uh, in the season when it's the most demand when everybody is at home and that's when they're using probably the most electricity. Uh, also, the Office on Aging had their Seniors Day down at uh, Grakowski Park and everything, and I believe that was pretty successful. Um, with that, that's all I have, Mayor. Thank, Thank you. you. Council Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My Human Relations uh, meeting is actually tomorrow at 6.30 via Zoom, so if anybody would like to attend, I know we'll probably be discussing a few applications for flag raising coming in September. Um, I still have not met with... Uh, the Board of Health, so I have nothing to report yet. Um, and I'm still waiting to be contacted about, with the Mayor's Advisory Board of Persons with Disabilities, Mr. Mayor. I don't know if uh, you can reach out. I know I have um, sometime before, but they still have not met. 
That's all I have. Okay. And they must be one of the few that have not met. Let's see what happened to them. Oh, that leaves me. Okay. Uh, just a, a quick report um, in general about you heard about the taxes that have come in. Um, the percent of differences between 2020 and 2021, as you know, your taxes are basically made up, your real estate taxes are made up of five components. The local municipal tax rate, the difference between 2020 and 2021 was 3%. The library tax, which is a separate tax, went to 5.75%. The school tax was a minuscule 0.11. The county tax jumped 6.62%, and the county open space tax jumped 5.27%. So basically that uh, the municipal taxes and the school taxes were uh, kept low and you know costs go up. So the library, well, the library is set by the state, so they have no control over that. And the county, well, you can see the county is paving its roads and uh, all of everything costs money. And if we want to have open space, well, that costs money too. Moving on to our agenda, public comments. Please come forward if you have any questions or comments. Please give your name and address and you'll have 10 minutes uh, to speak per speaker. Good evening, uh, Richard Byrne, 11 Asset Place. Uh, I am the chair of the Planning Commission, and I'm speaking in that role on this matter. Uh, I regret to inform you that the spider lantern fly has arrived here in South River. I've killed over a dozen of them myself in the past week. And uh, it's an invasive pest, it's a threat to uh, trees and other woody plants. They pierce the bark and feed on the sap and they can weaken the tree and they uh, excrete a sugary waste that can attract other damaging pests and also can uh, cross the growth of mold and fungi. And it's a very bad thing. Now, uh, according to the State Department of Agriculture, the uh, proper Response to the fighting one is to kill it on site and then to report it on the Department of Agriculture's website, or you can call their hotline at 1 833 4 the number bad bug. Um, Middlesex County is not a quarantine county, which means they want sighting reported still. Um, I'm guessing that they're going to quarantine, which means they won't require. But uh, yeah, and they like to jump when you try to step on them. So you get your dancing skills. But then, yeah, uh, they're here, and uh, if you see them, if you see something, say something. Do they actually fly, or? Yeah, they do. They, 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 they fly, but they jump. Yeah. You try to step on them, you see the guys. So, uh, you know, everybody. Keep an eye. I'm um, going to try and find proper um, materials from the Department of Agriculture that we can put on our website. And also, how best to kill them besides stomping on them, because you live opposite the forest there, and all those trees are endangered then. Yeah, uh, and I, I can say uh, with the shade tree applications, um, we have the fourth application. Um, where the tree is 100% dead, and on Google Street View, the tree was alive in 2018. So, um, probably not spotted lantern flies, but um, you, you may have another tree. Very good. Thank you, Richard. Okay. Anyone else on first call, second call? Third call, motion to close. Second. The motion is made to close by Councilman Gindy, seconded by Councilwoman Ballas. All in favor? Aye. Against the ayes have it.
There's one mayoral appointment to the Human Relations Commission, appointment of Jacqueline Brown for a three-year term. We now move to our consent resolutions. Is there any to be read separately? Mr. Mayor? Yes. Could we please read separately? I'm sorry, I uh, 215 and 219, please. Anyone else to be read separately? Uh, yeah, Mr. Mayor, I, uh, as you heard at my reports, we were talking about the fireworks. Uh, I know this is something that's coming up, so I'm uh, requesting that we uh, read the warning or consent resolution separately that we had prepared outside of the agenda. Are you requesting that there be a resolution added to this yeah. list? Okay. I understand, Clerk, did, that this came in late. Did you have this? Okay, so it'll be 221 concerning fireworks at the, the South River Festival, I guess it's called. All right, uh, reading those two separate. Anything else separate? Not, Madam Clerk. Uh, where is resolution 202101 authorizes the council to utilize a consent agenda to adopt various resolutions of a routine and non controversial nature at one time? Now, therefore, be it and it is hereby resolved that the board listed resolutions are hereby adopted by the Royal Council in whole as it the same or individually acted upon. I will read you off that we're going to the consent that excludes the three that we're requesting. Um, 204, except May 3rd, 2021, regular council meeting minutes. 205, except May 24th, 2021, regular executive session minutes. 206, except June 14th, 2021, regular council meeting minutes. 207, except July 19th, 2021, special council minutes. 208, authorized. It extended grace period for the 2021 third quarter taxes. 209 authorized status change for cadet to junior firefighter for South River Fire Department. Authorizing 210 authorized appointment of junior firefighter for the South River Fire Department. 211 authorized appointment of cadet for the South River Fire Department. 212 authorized appointments of the coordinator and members to the municipal alliance. 213 authorized appointment of IT webmaster. 214 authorized special events. Permit for St. Mary's Home Name Society. 216 authorized certain utility funds. 217 authorized purchase of a bucket truck for South River Electric Department. 218 approved special event permit for the Portuguese Club. 220 authorized the bills and claims list. May I have a motion? Motion. 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 Second. Thank you. Motion by Mr. Kindy, seconded by Mr. Oliveira. Roll call. Council Yes. Council President Sila. Yes, with the ext extension, uh, excuse me, extension, extension. extension. <laughs> of 209, 210, 211, and on 220, 21-01900, uh, 210948, 21-01275, 01-278, and 01787, 21 01486, and 21 01897. Thank you. Council Yes, with abstention to 209, 210, 211. Then down at 220, the bills 21019900, 01275, 01278. 01787, 01486, and 01661. Thank you. Councilman uh, Yes, with the uh, I'd like to stay from uh, resolution number 214. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, with the abstention of 218. Yes, with the abstention of 204, 205, 206, and 218. Thank you. 
consent resolutions have been adopted. Resolution 215. Resolution 215, opposed to Jake Brown Road Redevelopment Plan. May I have a motion? Motion. Motion to do what? Our tradition in South River is that when it's asked to be read separately, it is literally read separately. The whole thing. The whole, the whole thing. Unless somebody makes a motion to waive the full reading. Okay. But that's how we vote on it here. So okay. So it would be resolution 2021-215, resolution of the borough of South River regarding the Jake Brown Road redevelopment plan. And then you may read, Madam Clerk. So I'm reading. You're reading you're reading okay. the whole thing. Whereas the borough of Old Bridge is planning to develop at the areas at the intersections of Jake Brown Road in West Highway 9 and Jake Brown Road in White Oak Lane, the redevelopment plan, and whereas the borough of South River, known as the borough, admires Old Bridge's plan for economic redevelopment that are detailed in the redevelopment plan and wishes Old Bridge well in their efforts, and whereas the current traffic pattern illustrated in the redevelopment plan empties traffic onto Board Town Avenue. Move we'll to waive the full reading. Second. Motion has been made to waive the full reading by Councilman Mara, seconded by Mr. Gindy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? The ayes have it. Your pleasure on the resolution. Make a motion. We'll do it. Resolution. Second. Resolution has been moved by Mr. Sula, seconded by Mrs. Ballas. Discussion? I asked just for this to be read separately because I, I don't see where South River where this bothers South River in Old Bridge redevelopment. Mr. Town Ave is still not a traffic for us. I mean, why would we not want redevelopment in Old Bridge? Mr. Lundensky, what was the discussion? Well, the feeder roads from the borough and River Road is an important road and Old Bridge Turnpike is an important road are going to get jammed by this. Uh, they have much better highways that they could load this off than Bordentown Avenue. Uh, we'll ha end up having a backup at River Road and a backup at Olbers Turnpike because the the traffic will not allow that many cars to go through the lights. Um, East Brunswick has done a, a, a more extensive survey on this and uh, the discussions with Cerebral is that their development, which is mostly co you know commercial, and industrial down there already are clogging the roads. So we don't, you know, we wish Old Bridge well, but uh, it, it, they're dropping everything off on the Bordentown Avenue is not going to solve the problem. Not going to improve Bordentown Avenue, it's going to make it worse. Mm -hmm. now, and have not we learned all the trucks cutting through your town? Yes. And that will happen Old without a doubt. River Road is backed up now on a good day. Well, it's just just to add something to all this, which you are all unaware, and I was unaware until I was informed that on the 4th, the Cerebral Planning Board is going to be voting, or at least discussing, a redevelopment plan for the old Hercules property. They're planning to come in there and put in warehousing and with lots and lots of truck traffic. Now, the idea is that it's not going to affect Cerebral in general because they're all going to go down Cheesequake Road to Bordentown yeah. Avenue. And from there, they will disperse. What I'm interested in is my office happens to be right around there, so I'm interested in that aspect, but also I'm going to be attending because that's only phase one. Phase two is to build more warehousing that will empty out onto Hartle Street. And if you don't know where Hartle Street is, like me, you have to look it up. Guess where Hartle Street jumps out, dumps out into? It dumps out onto Journey Mill Road. And if they're gonna come out of Journey Mill Road, guess which way they're gonna go to the turnpike? Yes. Over the bridge. Over the bridge and around that nice tight bend at Reed Street. 
So I'm going to be attending there. And you can imagine what if they didn't, they weren't going in that direction. Their guess they're going to go in the opposite direction on Journey Mill Road to Bordentown Avenue. So. Okay, but this redevelopment plan is for what? What is Old Bridge proposing? How many houses? No, mixed development. Mixed development. Yeah. I'm just a firm believer that new development brings more people, brings people to more businesses, brings, moves things in a better direction. And a better direction would be to drop them on Route 9, yes. not Bordentown yeah. Avenue. Because I think if they were dropped on Route 9, I mean, I don't think there'd be any problems at all. I just don't see how it's going to affect that. Okay. That's why. I okay. That's, you're right. Any uh, other points to make? No. Roll call. Councilwoman Ballard? Yes. Councilman, I'm sorry, Council President Sula? Yes. Councilman Gimby? Yes. Councilman Gershinsky? Yes. Councilwoman Mira? No. Yes. And the resolution has been passed. Resolution 2021-219, resolution authorizing appointment of Patricia Spada as an administrative assistant for the South River Utilities Department. Madam Clerk, please read the ordinance. The resolution. Uh, we are council with the advice and consent of the council of the Borough of South River to be providing the following appointment. Patricia Zapata to the position of administrative assistant of the utilities department of the Borough of South River at a starting salary of $36,230.55 as per Local 255 United Service Workers contract, effective as of August 11, 2021. Your pleasure on the resolution. Motion. Second. Resolution has been made by Mr. Gindy, seconded by Mr. Siula, discussion? Roll call. Councilman Ballas? Yes. Council President Siula? Yes. Councilman Gibson? Yes. Councilman Burchinski? Yes. Councilwoman Mira? No. Yes. Thank you. Resolution has been passed. We've gone through the new business, which is the no, reading of fireworks. resolutions. Fireworks. Just as soon as we finish the uh, fireworks of the uh, South River Festival. Madam Clerk. Resolution authorizing fireworks display by South River Recreation Department on August 26, 2021, with a rain date of August 27, 2021. Whereas the South River Recreation Department of the Borough of South River has requested permission to make a public display of fireworks at the one site on the South River Board of Education property known as Getty Stadium. Make a motion to waive the full reading. Second. A motion to waive the full reading by Mr. Siola, seconded by Mr. Gindy. All in favor? Aye. 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 And against? The ayes have it. Your pleasure on the resolution. Motion to pass the resolution. The resolution has been made by Mr. Gindy. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Ballas. Mr. Gindy, would you please explain what this resolution is for? The resolution is to uh, pass the uh, fireworks, which would be held on August 26th at the uh, uh, Denning Stadium. Any other discussion? Mr. Mayor, if I may, can we actually have the resolution before we say it? She was reading the resolution and then uh, there was a motion to waive the full reading. Okay, but can we actually have the resolution? Nobody has the resolution. I understand we waive the full reading, but I'd like to at least have something that I'm going to vote on. Anything else? Nope. Roll call. Councilwoman 
Dallas? Yes. Council President Teal? Yes. Council Mukherjee? Yes. Council Mukherjee? Yes. Council Woman Mira? Yes. Council Mukherjee? Yes. 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 And now, having done the resolutions uh, that we've read, the new business, we now go to the governing body comments for the good and welfare of the borough. We started with Mr. Gindy uh, last time. We'll start with Council this time. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm going to read the agenda item number one. Ninth agenda, but not the August 2nd agenda. They put up notices from tonight's meeting and the August 9th meeting, but no, no agenda on the virtual bulletin board. However, we did put up the, as Mayor said, the agenda on where you list the agendas in the minutes. So I hope going forward now that we have uh, adopted the webmaster and IT that this will move a little smoother. Um, as I fast to, as possible. I forgot to ask um, what the status of our civics app is at the moment. Do we know a time where that will be going live or not yet? We're trying to launch by the end of the week. By the end of the week? Okay. Um, and I'm sorry, reading this last um, ordinance, I just realized that we also have here, you know, we're informing our borough contracted EMS. What is the status of our EMS since we knocked down the bid? According to the RFP, Robert Wood Johnson extended their contract 90 days um, until we're going to go out for bid again um, and see if we get someone to bid uh, at a better uh, solicitation than we did the last time. Okay. Will that be next meeting or September? Do we have like an idea of when we'll be bidding for that? We have three months. We'll probably be going out the end of August for rebid and have it for um, September to a point for the next uh, two to five years. Okay. Uh, other than that, Mr. Mayor, uh, I see that we are repealing the, the PEP um, ordinance. I'm curious to know what have we done with the money that we do have in that right now, Mr. Zayla. So there, there are um, applications that went before the, I'm not sure if it was planning or zoning board. One of their uh, regulations to be able to do their work would be doing that, correct? And nobody has paid that so far? I would say before we repeal this, we should look into the uh, applications that had already been approved with this in it see where the money will be going because it's supposed to be for um, parking, the parking utility. Um, has anybody researched this? Because I am almost certain that at least two applications were approved with this PEP. So if you have not received any money, then something is up. Mr. Gindy, could you take a look into that? Okay. I'm not sure if it was planning or zoning, but uh, I know off the top of my head the applications that I'm thinking of, so I'll over to you. Um, other than that, I hopefully we'll have more fun, exciting things for the next meeting. That's it. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Gruchinski. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank our public service workers, uh, our police, our choir, and uh, Robert Wood Johnson for taking care of us. Um, also, in our DPW, our utilities department, for the quick response that they had from the incident that we had back on Main Street with the power outage. Um, of course, it entailed quite a few uh, other things, too, as far as traffic went and uh, the paving of Olbers Turnpike, and also it was uh, resolved quite quickly. Um, with that, we finally gotten a little bit of a break in the weather and everything like that, too. Um, school will be starting up soon, so um, it's going to be uh, keep an eye out to the kids and everything. They're going to probably be a little bit restless with things opening up and all, and uh, they're out there in the parks and what have you. With that, that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Oliveira. As uh, Councilman Gruchensky said, just want to thank the police chief, uh, department, H for all your hard work. Uh, as we're going through summer, you know, my family and I, we like to go to the parks on the weekend. One of the things I've noticed is our parks are littered with trash by Sunday night. So, H, is it possible to get some more trash cans and strategically place them? I know JFK Park by the basketball court, you know, I, I, I believe it's tough to walk 25 yards to throw it out. Maybe if we can put some trash cans by the hoops on the side next to Ann Street, uh, you know, this way we can try to clean up the parks. I know the guys on Monday do a great job doing that, but if we can try to minimize it as much as possible, you know, that would be, uh, that'd be awesome. The other thing is, speaking to some of my neighbors, you know, please make sure you're picking up after your dog. Um, you know, a ton of times there's, you know, just be mindful of your neighbors. Um, and for the, right now, that's all I have there. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Bellis? Um, actually, I was going to also mention what uh, Councilman Oliveira said. There's nothing like stepping out of your car and having a nice little surprise from your neighborhood pet. Needless to say, I was always uh, a big proponent of uh, we have to follow up on this. There's signs all over, but and especially I'm by the school. They walk the dogs on that hill, and I don't really notice them picking up after them. And those kids, you know, especially when school starts, they will be having a little surprise. Um, I'd also like to thank the police department, the borough workers, the fire department, and first responders. You were all put to the test this past week or so between the down poles and the, the house fire up on Red Rick Way, and you saved you saved a lot of you saved lives, you saved property, and uh, and again an excellent job. And of course, I have to say something about Drew. I want to congratulate his family. I. I know they'll all be down there with him over the weekend. And what I understand, too, is quite in maybe a little contingency from South River. And when I checked, if you want to watch it, it's going to be on Sunday night on the NFL Network at 7. So far, that's the only channel that's showing it, which I don't get on my cable. So I'll have to go somewhere else to watch. But I congratulate them all. That's it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to mimic uh, what um, Councilman Ballas said about the DPW. The electrical department did a phenomenal job Tuesday night. I happened to be out there um, very well put together. The police department uh, did a very awesome job on you know, uh, the road control and all. Um, please stay safe uh, to everyone that's out there. Uh, fireworks, I know it's been hard this whole year, especially with the pandemic. Uh, we're happy to see that's going to be coming. Cross your fingers. I know the Delta virus has been uh, the talk of uh, the news. Um, in the last past few months, I have been looking into Blue Acres. The reason I'm bringing this up now is because I want it on the agenda, if it's possible, for the August 23rd. Uh, after going through the... Blue Acres, speaking to uh, DEP, I found an interesting loophole that could benefit this town. So uh, if you could, please uh, have this on the August 23rd meeting. Would okay. you put that under the agenda session, uh, Madam Clerk? Please, I'll have everybody with the information in their packets so you see what I saw, and uh, hopefully we can work on this. Um, the weather is great. Please watch out for kids in the road. Uh, they're in and out. Be careful, stay safe, that's all I have. Thank you. Council President. Thank you. Um, again, I'd just like to thank our all our first responders. Um, they do a fantastic job day in and day out. And 
nobody really gives them any credit for what they do, but they do a fantastic job. Um, as everybody was saying here about the truck accident the other night, took down two poles. Uh, the pole happened to be a Verizon pole. And when our headquarters called Verizon, it was two and a half to three hours before they can even get somebody out there. Um, our guys took a look at the wires and with the help of the PD, holding all the traffic back, keeping all the roads closed, they untangled the wires while the pole was floating in the air, hanging off the wires. After they untangled them, they actually got the power back on in a short period of time. They held the wires up with, with poles so the bucket trucks could get underneath the wires to get to the certain areas. And people ask why we need bucket trucks. Here's a perfect example. The small bucket truck got under the wires, were able to untangle the ones on the bow. The two large bucket trucks got over on Main Street and they got those untangled and the power was restored. Uh, during this time, when power was out, people were using generators. I understand somebody actually called and complained about the noise of a generator. There was no power. It was an emergency situation, and somebody complained about noise. I couldn't believe it. So, again, be kind to your neighbors. Look out for them in an emergency situation, especially on the elderly. If it's hot, check in on them. Make sure they're okay. And with that, Mayor, I just want to say one other thing. Congratulations to Drew and his family. Um, he's a awesome guy. He does a lot for the town and a lot for the kids. So congratulations to Drew. Yes, by all means, congratulations, Drew. It's, it's about time that you got there. You can find on YouTube how they surprised him uh, with that, that uh, when he found out about it. And it's nice that Roger Staubach is going to be there. Uh, to uh, bring him into the Hall of Fame. So that's a, a good thing. Uh, to thank some people, I want to thank Sal and your recording crew there, Sal. You did a good job. You know, it's, I know it's tough uh, trying to record these meetings, especially in a place like here. But thank you for your work. Uh, the uh, electric company, again, you just heard, you know, getting the electric back there. Uh, I was in Cerebral when I... My phone just started going crazy with everybody telling me it's like, you know, there's no power in town. It's like uh, and power in cerebral. But um, it was only the one circuit, and uh, they did a great job. They were able to jerry rig the whole thing and to get us through it because otherwise it would have been a long, hot night uh, there. So thank you to our electric department, to our first responders, especially the fire department, one o'clock in the morning on Sunday. Uh, they put a fire uh, over on Redwick, uh, prevented more damage. Uh, thank you to all our first responders for getting out there. It's, uh, it's tough to do, but it can be very rewarding. They need volunteers. Remember the house you save may be your own. Finally, a special council meeting will take place on August 9th at 7 p.m. Most likely, probably, it'll be at 61 Main Street. Pay attention to the news as to what is going on. Uh, we may all be there, but having to wear masks. Don't know. It might be a Zoom meeting. Pay attention, but as of now, it's at 61 Main Street. Basically, all that we're going to be doing is voting on the ordinances that we could not vote on today because of the advertising snafu. We do have our next regularly count, scheduled council meeting will take place on August 23rd at 7 p.m. and we should be all back to normal at that time. Is there anything else to come before us? Hearing none, we have a motion to adjourn. Motion to close. Second. A motion to adjourn by Mr. Gindi, seconded by Mr. Siula. All in favor? Aye. All against? We stand adjourned. Aye.